Father. Oh, put your hands together. Father, we glorify your holy name. Indeed, you are great. For you loved us so much that you gave your dearest begotten son that he sacrificed to atone us and reconcile us to your love, establishing us an eternal grace and covering that the devil and darkness will have no hold over us, that hatred and bitterness will not have the best of us, but rather will walk in your light, in your love, in your preservation, in your grace, in your mercies, we thank you. We say, indeed, you are great. Even as we are gathered here tonight, we pray, Father, that your spirit will take control over every aspect of tonight's gathering. That at the end, the brokenhearted will find laughter and joy. The betrayed will find strength and grace. The dejected will find celebration and glory. Thank you that you have answered us and you know every heart desire that is represented here tonight, here on radio, here on TV, here on live stream. We bless you and we ask that you shall use our mother as a mouthpiece to bring love and light into our lives, into our homes, into our families. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, I want to hear a louder amen. Oh, can you make it a louder amen? I want you, before you take your seat, walk to five people you haven't spoken to before in Royal House Chapel. Tell them how beautiful and handsome they are looking and welcome them. Tell them you are their host for tonight. Move out of your room, move out of your decks and welcome somebody. Oh, if you are watching us live on Sam Crunchy Ankara Facebook, on Reverend Mrs. Rita Crunchy Ankara Facebook, Instagram, on YouTube Powerline TV, live on Powerline TV, I want you to welcome your family members around you. If your wife is by you, if your husband is by you, give him or her a kiss, a peg. Say, happy Valentine's Day. You are my Valentine for the day and for the rest of the year. Oh, please move out of your seat. Go and show love to someone. It was their day. What are they expecting tonight? Oh, I'm expecting to see love. Please talk to somebody. No, no someone by name tonight. You, you have no idea what is happening in the realms of the spirit. Please, shake hands. Once you are shaking hands, check if there is a ring or not. And, and find out if you can shoot your shots. Please, we, we are wild. We are, we are not here to joke at all. Oh, someone says I should give you 30 seconds more. Because the gentleman is taking a phone number over there. Please, you have 30 seconds. 30 seconds. <laughs> Hallelujah. Please take your seats. If there is an empty seat in front of you, please move and occupy it. You are our VIP for tonight. All the white decorated seats are for you. So if you are sitting at the far end, not on a white seat, please move and occupy the white seats. If you came with someone, hold the person by the hand and move. We are waiting for you. We are waiting for you all looking beautiful, handsome. Please move, 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 move. I am going to start asking questions and I'll start from the back. I'll start from the back. I'll start from the back. Please move, move. We still, we still have a lot of white seats. Kindly move. Let's do this in three minutes, please. Can you do that for us? Thank you. Thank you. Please move. Can I have some ushers? Tonya and team, if you can assist. Daniel, 
kindly move. Daniel, kindly. I, 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 will, I will call your date of birth in addition. <laughs> if I don't move. <laughs> Hallelujah. Please let's ensure all those who come in, come and occupy their seats on my left hand side. We still have. Thank you very much. We want to make sure our video work is beautiful as well. Welcome to the 2024 edition Valentine with Mama Rita. Minister Fabio and wife, please would endorse if you can kindly move and occupy the seats in front for us. Please put your hands together for them, one of our seasoned counselors, and we definitely will be hearing from them tonight as well. Hallelujah. We have the voice that puts families together in the house. Oh, I was expecting a better response than this. We are in the fourth year or rather the fifth year having had Family Life series streaming on Powerline TV on Facebook, on YouTube and this year's edition is going to be something extraordinary starting with tonight's session you are going to see a lot of surprises, I promise you. You are going to see a lot of surprises. Before we kick start, we would want to endorse those who are joining us for the first time. During the presentations, during the interactions, you are going to be seeing the telephone numbers on your screen that you can be using to send your questions through. Plus 233-200-515253. If you have love wishes that you want to send to someone, we are ready to read that love message to the person that you want us to do. If you don't have the words, don't worry. Just send me the person's name and how you feel. I will send the words to you. You can describe me as love AI today. I will do it for you for free. Hallelujah. We are going to have a beautiful ministration by one of the sons of the mother of the house. He is currently the president of our campus ministry, Rosa University of Education, Winneba. He is studying Bachelor of Arts Music, a very talented...
Oh, put your hands together and show some love to Elijah. Oh God, please, you can do it better. Show him some love. Show him some love. We are here to distribute love. Please show him some love. Before we move on to the next stage, who has a microphone? I want to ask what your expectations are for the night. We would want to know what your definition for love is and how you want to see it expressed tonight. You thought we are coming to talk to you. You will talk to us. People are beginning to hate me already. The eyes that are directed towards me. Now, now those who look away from me are those I'm going to walk to. <laughs> Please, who has the microphone? Come, come over, come over, come over. We, I, I see lots of love concentrated in this arena. Don't worry. Please, bring it to this wonderful woman. Your name, just your name, no to the wonderful woman there. Your name, where you are coming from, what your expectation is tonight. My name is Tekwa Akwete. Okay. I'm coming from Chado. You're coming from Chado? Yes, please. Wow. And my expectation this evening is finding a love, finding someone mm. that's will accept and give me a chance to okay <laughs> hey, let, let, you, they, they have no idea you are, you are streaming live to united states of america we are streaming live to europe we'll be receiving messages on our phones via mama rita very soon thank you very much let's have the gentleman in the heart his name if he's here alone or not. All right. After him, we'll take the last one, then we move to the next session. Yes, Thank sir. You. Thank you so much. I'm Harry. Uh, Harry? Yeah. Okay. From Taifa. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm here to experience some um, new love. New and, love? Yeah. yeah. yeah course, you are, um, are you tired of the old love? <laughs> of course. Okay. Yeah. And um, if I'm able to find... Um, a new love. Yeah, you enjoy new love. Great, yeah. Oh, put your hands together for Harry. Harry is here to find new love. Please move, move to this corner. Move to this corner. They, they need it. Move to that corner. Now, choose somebody randomly. Choose someone randomly. You the gentleman yourself, you are a suspect. You... <laughs> All right. Who do we have there? Hi, my name is Catherine. Catherine, all right. Yes, I'm from Nungwa and Great. Are you are you here in Ayinfie or from an assembly? I'm from New Dowenya Assembly. New Dowenya, awesome. Yes, please. Great. Yes, so my expectations for tonight. I'm just here to listen to a um, Mama Rita. Okay. Um download knowledge into us, download mm. wisdom into us. Mm. So yeah, that's what I'm expecting today. Oh, put your hands together for Catherine. And and before I move, the gentleman holding the microphone. You yourself, what drove you here tonight? Talk to us. The camera is on you. America is watching you. Okay, so I'm Michael Fair. All right, Michael. Tonight. I just came for God to do his work. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Yeah, sure. Oh, yes, yeah, sure. <laughs> All right, put your hands together for Michael. He's been placed on the spot. Oh, if you're excited to be in the house, put your hands together. Let's welcome Roberta. Roberta has a short word for us. Yeah, yeah, and then we we'll move on to the next phase. Put your hands together for Roberta. Say. You're looking wonderful. Um, are you enjoying old love or you also want to experience new love? You are, hey, be careful what you say. Hallelujah. So, like Reverend Chiva said, my name is Roberta C. And I am the Assistant Creative Director of Arisa Couture. And tonight, my assignment here is very simple. 
I'm here to introduce the speaker. She is the Director of Social Service Counseling and Practical Ministry. She is the head and host of Family Life TV series here on Powerline TV. She also is the only wife of our father, the Apostle General. And she is the founder and president of Royal Ladies Ministry here in Royal House Chapel International. Now, somebody who has worked so hard to acquire all these titles for herself, you think she's conceited, snorted, and so full of herself. But that's not the case. Now, about three to four years ago, I had the opportunity to get closer to her due to my line of work. My boss and I, she's sitting in the corner, Renee, CEO of Arisa Kuto. So we would organize fitting sessions for her in her home. Throughout the fitting sessions, mommy will walk in the mirror, model. She would check herself. She said, mm, I'm looking so nice in my dress. And then she would chat and laugh with us like we are her mates. After all this, this woman will pay her bill in full. After paying her bill in full, when we are leaving, she'll say, Renee, take this, fuel your car. Renee, take this, buy lunch for yourself. Roberta, take this, buy lunch for yourself. I know you are waiting for fuel your car. I don't have a car yet, but very soon I'll get a car. Then she'll go ahead to tell Dick and Tina to pack food items for us and we'll carry to our home. And the fitting session is not just once, every single time. If you know Mami very well, she's a fashionista, so every time she's wearing something new and she does this so frequently. Now, it has made me draw a conclusion that she is the cupid of our time. Yes, the cupid of our time. So those of you who don't know Cupid or haven't heard anything about Cupid, Cupid is the god of love. And when he throws his arrow, everybody receives love. And why do I say she's the Cupid of our time? You don't need to be her biological child for her to show you love. She does it so effortlessly. And that's why our father, the Apostle General, who also has good taste and good eyes, couldn't resist her unfiltered love. And they've been married for 38 years and counting. See, tonight, she is about to throw her Cupid arrow. And I would urge you to be so aggressive. Where it has reached, <laughs> you need to be aggressive. Catch it and then turn your life around. Without further ado, help me with a standing ovation. Welcome the Premier Lady of Royal House Chapel, the only wife of our father, the Apostle General, the only TV host you can think of, and our swagger mama, Reverend Mrs. Rita Kwanche Ankara. As you have come here tonight, I know you are looking for love. You may have been single for long, but as she steps here, take every single word to heart and your life will never be the same. I prophesy that the Lord will visit you today. I prophesy that whatever that is happening in your marriage, in your relationship, anything that is falling apart, as she speaks to you tonight, everything will come together and everything will come through for you. Thank you so much. Some people have raps and words. I got some raps. I got some raps today. And I want to read it to you. Let me know who sent it to me. Happy Valentine's Day. 
Every day is Valentine for us anyway. Anna. Thanks for standing with me in these many years. You are different among all. Enjoy the meeting tonight. I replied, Chale, these words must come with a present. <laughs> he replies, Abba, so I should not show small love. Come and take me. <laughs> Who sent this? <laughs> Praise the Lord. So those who were asked to come forward and you didn't, you will miss a miracle. Please be seated. I want to welcome you to our Valentine's Day. Don't ask anybody to leave them where they are. I want to welcome you to our Valentine's night service. And some way, somehow, it fell on a Wednesday during our family life series with Mama Rita. I thought you were going to clap to that. And I want to welcome all our online viewers. This is our first meeting for the year. Um, we ended up in, in December, and I think this is our first series for this year. Our topic today is finding love again. Tell somebody, I will find love again. Even if you are married, it's possible your, your, your love is still. Say, I will find love again. Are you ready? I will speak shortly. And after speaking, we'll have a panel who will tell us first about their past and then about their present. Number one, how they lost love. And number two, how they found love and how they feel today. Finding love again. And then we also have a couple who will be exchanging their wedding vows. Hey, you think we are joking here? And they will cut their wedding cake. It is very difficult to find love again. Because as believers, we ask questions. Why did I lose love in the first place? If God knew this relationship will not work, why did I enter into the relationship? Some people say, everybody has a rape. Every gentleman. Or every lady comes from one gentleman. So if my first love was that gentleman, then if I break the relationship with him or I divorce him, do I find love again? My darling, you will find love again. Tell somebody standing or sitting by you, I will find love again. Sometimes we wonder, Where was God in all of this? Did God answer me when I prayed? At the end of the day, you will know whether God was in your breakup or not. Whether God was in all of what you went through or not and whether God 
is with you now or not. The truth is that there's no one who has gone through breakup, who has gone through divorce, who will tell you it is easy. It's not easy, I can hear from the back. It sucks your energy and it gets very stressful. And sometimes you think that all a witch Jezebel somebody who could call forth fire somebody who could kill 50 prophets hey, 50 people they bring more he will kill they bring more yet this same powerful man of God major prophet how to run from no other person than a woman hid himself in a cave God finds him in the cave and God says what are you doing here ask somebody what are you doing in the situation you find yourself then he starts complaining to God I'm running away from this witch I'm running away from my ex. I am running away from the one who hurt me so much. I am running away from the one who broke my heart. I am not sure that marriage is for me. I am not sure love is for me. I am not sure I am meant to be happy in life. I am not sure I am meant to be love again. Everybody else is like my ex. So he complains to God and says the whole of Israel, there is no prophet that has not bowed down to bow. In other words, there's no prophet, there's no man, there's no woman. Who is good? There is no woman or man that can show me true love. Somebody sent me a message yesterday. I pray she's here. And said, Mommy, too many people have broken my heart. And I don't think love is for me. God said, What are you talking about? He said, you think you are all alone. You think you are the only righteous person. I am here to let you know that there are 7,000 other prophets who have never bowed down to bow or have never kissed bow. My darling, you think that everybody is like your ex. You think that there's no good person for you. I am here to let you know. Your ex is the only wicked one. Your ex is the only witch and wizard. And I want you to know that your ex is actually watching us tonight. My darling, your ex will see you again. When they see you, you will be walking down the aisle. 
with somebody better, somebody more handsome, somebody more intelligent, somebody more richer, somebody more anointed, somebody who is actually taking you to your next level. If you believe it, I want you to shout yes. And if you believe my words, I want you to hoot at your ex. Some of you didn't know how to hoot well. They will know that they really missed something huge. So how do you find love again? How do you find love again? How do you find love again? I am going to say something that sounds very stupid and sounds very foolish. Number one way of finding love again Give thanks. Somebody say what? Very what? Thank you, Lord. My darling, give thanks. Like somebody said, thank you, Lord. This might not sound, it might sound very unrealistic. I'm, I'm in pain. I am hurting. Things are not okay for me. Why should I give thanks? My darling, the Bible says that in all things, in all things, in all things, I want you to reply, in all things, in all things, when you are happy, when the relationship is going well, when you are married, when you have children, when your children are doing well, when they break your heart. When the one you love disappoints you. When they walk out of your life. My darling, for the over 40 years that I have walked with the Lord, I have discovered that anytime things are not right in my life, anytime things don't go well in my life, Anytime I feel disappointed, anytime I feel let down, anytime something drops out of my hands, when I give thanks to God, what actually happens is that I get the same thing times a thousand. I don't like your clap offering. My darling, when you give thanks, God opens bigger doors. When you give thanks, God opens the windows of heaven and pours down his blessings over you. When you are crying, give thanks. When you are sad, give thanks. When you are bitter, give thanks. When you are hurt, give thanks. My darling, it could have been worse than you have it now. Out of the same situation that you are going through or you went through, some people found themselves six feet down. Some people died. Other people found themselves in the psychiatric hospitals. But tonight, you are here wearing red. There 
is some, certainly something that God wants you to see. God wants you to learn. And God wants you to have in the relationship that broke, broke up. It was an experience. Learn out of your experience. It is a learning curve. Learn out of it. When you hear other people's stories, you will know that my own is small. Tell somebody, my own is small. And what God expects you to do is that you use your story to help other people. At the end of the day, when the jigsaw puzzle is put together, you will know that God indeed had a hand in it. In a second, I want you to say thank you to the Lord. In a second, say thank you to the Lord. I mean, say thank you. Thank you for what you went through. 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 Number two. How do you find love again? Number one, give thanks. Number two. Give yourself time to heal. Whilst I'm speaking, whether you are in person or you are online, start writing down your questions. If you are online, you can start sending your questions. Number two, give yourself time to heal. Don't rush quickly to find love again. I might do another series um, either next week or next two weeks or next three weeks. As I was preparing, I was surprised what God was talking to me about. Maybe, in, I don't know when, but it looks like this one is going to be a series. And go ahead if you want to clap. I'm going to handle the mistakes we commit when we are finding love again. The mistakes we commit when we are finding love again. The other thing we'll be treating is that I'm going to come on with Dr. Seth to talk about the emotional aspects of breakup. How to deal with with yourself emotionally and how to come out of it. So all your questions, please write it down. My darling, you need time to heal and come out of your pain. Time itself heals and face away your pain. That is why it's very important that you don't rush into another relationship when you haven't healed well. Time will make you feel that coming out of the relationship in the first place was the best thing that happened to you. While you wait... And while you are finding time to heal, number one, get more involved with church. Get more involved with church. You have no idea what church does for us. As you come and you hear the messages, as you come, and you take part in worship as you come and you take part in prayer as you come 
and you hear the songs, the reviving songs from the choir, you have no idea that you are actually going through healing. So whilst you have come out of breakup, don't forsake the assembly of the brethren. Continue to come to church. Continue to pray. Continue to read your Bible. Whilst you are going through the breakup, get yourself busy with a group. In Royal House Chapel, we have so many groups. We have the ushering department. We have pillars of pillars. We have armor bearers. We have 14 choirs. We have protocol. We have so many different kinds of groups. We have royal ladies. We have the men's ministry. We have WMG. We have 2G. My darling, find yourself in a group. Get active in a group. As you come for the meetings, as they crack jokes, as everybody is laughing and you laugh small, whilst you go through that, what you are actually doing is that you are going through therapy. Go back to school. Take up a course. Get involved in a project. Take care of yourself by eating well, by exercising, whether through walking, through jogging, going to the gym, putting on music in your room and dancing all by yourself. And then sleep well. Learning how to fall in love again is not easy, but time will bring you the healing. Say, Time will bring you the healing. Say, Time will bring me my healing. After you have gone through all the things I am talking about. If you get the feeling, you continue to get the feeling of worthlessness, of loneliness, of hopelessness, of sadness, of being alone all the time. Of becoming suicidal then you must consider seeking professional help either going through going to a trained counselor or a trained therapist what they actually do what the trained counselor does or what the therapist does is that they help you cope with whatever you are going through. Are we listening? They help you cope with the emotional pain. And they help you navigate through your pain. They can even help you get rid of old memories. Of everything you went through with your ex. If you get a very good therapist. They can help you forget. Please don't enter into a new relationship. Listen carefully. Don't enter into a new relationship unless you are sure that you are properly healed. I have seen people enter into a first relationship, enter into a second relationship, enter into a third even a fourth the reason why they enter a second a third a fourth and a fifth is because after the first one they didn't heal well 
when we are we we have to talk about the mistakes people do we will go into it some of the mistakes we do don't be in a hurry to show your ex that you did don't be in a hurry to show your ex that I am I, I, I am on road don't be in a hurry to show your, your ex that I am so marketable eh? I've gone past you don't be in a hurry to, to show to your ex I've gone past you so you are, you, you, you are showing on social media letting everybody know you are happy when indeed you are not happy my darling it is okay to cry when you want to cry it is okay to come and sit in front of the altar during ministration time it is okay my darling look at me when you allow time you will heal well and when you bounce back even your walking will change my darling your ex will see you and do like this and you'll be hearing some stories today how some ex are getting running stomachs how some ex are getting hypertension how some ex are cutting themselves with knives my darling nobody will kill them they themselves will commit suicide you didn't hear me I said nobody will kill them you won't pray for them to die they themselves will commit suicide when they see you bounce back when they see you on CNN when they see you on BBC when they see you on family life with Mama Rita Are you with me? My ex saw me and had running stomach. He saw me and knew God had blessed me. I've shared my story so many times. He went around telling everybody that me future Mrs. Rita Krantiankra. I will never be able to do without him. I will come back begging and I will come back knocking at his door. My darling, by the time he heard, I was in my white gown. My darling, I didn't put anything on social media. By the time he saw me, I had grabbed another anchor. By the time he saw me, I had grabbed another man who was taller than him. Another man who was more handsome. These days I don't like to share that part of my story because um, his relatives are in the church. His siblings are in the church. I was there when he came and said I should borrow him some money. My darling, your ex will come borrowing money from you. They will come looking for food from you. I said to him, I can't give you, I can't borrow you money. 
unless you come to see my husband and tell him we should borrow you money. I thought he would never come. And those people, they have no shame. Oh. He came. We borrowed him the money. He said he was coming to pay. But me, myself, I knew he would never be able to pay. Guess what? A month after he came to us to borrow the money, I heard he was dead. Are you with me? Let me know when my time is up. I can do the rest next week. I have so much. Number three, also very, very difficult. And also sounds unreasonable and unrealistic. Very, very painful. But you still have to do it. Number one, forgive yourself. Number two, forgive your ex. I won't stand here and pretend that forgiving your ex is easy. After everything he did, or after everything she did, my darling, it's difficult. Forgiving yourself and forgiving your ex is a step towards finding love again. Listen carefully. Forgiving your ex and forgiving yourself, especially forgiving your ex, is a step towards finding not love but finding true love again. Harboring bitterness and pain and the past can hinder the flow of God, the anointing of God, the blessing of God over your life. I always teach school of restoration that unforgiveness and bitterness is like an umbrella that covers you. When you hold an umbrella, you prevent the sun from getting to you. You prevent yourself from getting vitamin D. When you hold the umbrella, you prevent the, ro the rain from getting to you. In the same way spiritually, unforgiveness is like an umbrella over your life. It covers you such that any time God is bringing you somebody better, it's covered. Any time God wants to bless you, it's covered. Any time there's a flow of love over your life, it is covered. Any time somebody is coming into your life, it is covered. And the thing I have seen about unforgiveness, the truth is that your ex is happy. Your ex is moving on with his life. Your ex is eating. Your ex is sleeping well. And yet you are hurting. You are in pain. When you hear his name, your heart beats faster. When you see him anywhere, you frown. When you see his shadow or her shadow, you run. My darling, forgive yourself. Forgive yourself for the mistakes you committed in the relationship. 
Forgive yourself for entering into the relationship in the first place. My darling, we all make mistakes. Are you listening? We all make mistakes. Mistakes makes us better people. Mistakes matures us. Mistakes causes us to learn. Mistakes opens our eyes to better things. If you don't make a mistake, my darling, you will never learn. If you are here and you have ever made a mistake in a relationship, or you even made a mistake in entering into the relationship, I want you to clap for yourself for making that mistake. Only a few people clapped. <clears throat> Whilst you are learning to forgive yourself, and you are learning to forgive your ex, One thing I want to tell everybody here. Learn to love yourself. There's nobody that can love you more than you love yourself. I don't like your clap offering. Don't be too hard on yourself. And why me? Why is this happening to me? Why didn't I see it coming? Why didn't I see the red flags? Why didn't I hear God speak? So God, if I didn't even hear you, why didn't you reveal it to anybody else? My darling, don't be too hard on yourself. Tell somebody sitting by you, don't be too hard on yourself. Love yourself. Whilst you are learning to forgive yourself, have a, a spa day. Go to the spa. Have a massage. Have facial. Do your nails. Do pedicure. Go out with friends and chill. My darling, Valentine is one day. But for you, Valentine must be the whole year. My darling, refuse to let the devil whose duty is to kill is to do what? And then and then first is to steal is to do what? Is to do what? My darling, everything or anything the devil wants to do is to kill the you inside of you. Is to kill your personality. Kill your confidence. Kill your image. Is to steal your happiness. Steal your joy. And then at the end of the day, he wants to kill you. My darling, 
You will never die before your time. Somebody didn't hear me. I refuse it that you will die before your time. You will never have hypertension. You won't die because of some woman. You won't die because of some silly fool. You won't die with somebody with dirty and smelling armpits. You won't die with somebody with smelling mouth. You won't die. I said you won't die. Are you here with me? Listen. A righteous man. A what? A what? I want to hear you. A what? Say it again. Say it again. Say it again. I want it to enter into your spirit. Say it again. My darling, a righteous man shall fall seven times. A righteous man shall do what? A righteous man shall do what? A righteous man shall do what? Listen carefully, everybody. Look at me. It's not a sinner that falls seven times. It's not the useless person that falls seven times. It's not the person who has sinned that falls seven times. It is the righteous. It is the one who is going somewhere. It's the one that the devil has seen the future. It's the one who will be a first lady one day. It's the one who will be the next Mama Rita. It's the one that will be the next Apostle General. It's the one that her star or his star will shine one day. It's the one that is going somewhere one day. He or she is the one that will fall seven times. But the wicked shall fall by calamity. My darling, anybody who will laugh at you because of your pre predicament, anybody who will laugh at you because of what you are going through, anybody who will laugh at you because you are divorcing, anybody who will laugh at you because you are breaking up, the Bible says, they shall fall by calamity. Your ex, who thinks he's gotten you, he will fall by calamity. As for you, I see you rise and rise and rise and rise and rise. Put a smile back on your face. And laughter in your mouth. Change your wardrobe. If you can. Have a new hairstyle. If you must change. The color of your hair to blue. Or to green. Or to purple. Let your ex know that he's not worth your tears. And he's not worth your time. I have about four more points. I will take it to next week. We will go on a short commercial break for those who are online with us. We will come back with a panel. Hello everyone. 
from the 1st of January, Royal Ladies entered into our 30th anniversary. For every woman who is listening to me, I want to wish you a happy 30th anniversary. I am wearing white because I'm excited at what God will do. It is my year for celebration. It's my year to dance. It's my year to laugh. I don't know how many women are ready for our 30th anniversary. It's going to be real fun. From January through December, it's all going to be fun, 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 fun. Hooray! If you are there and you are beside a woman, tell that woman happy 30th anniversary. It's starting with a Bring Your Basket Party. And this year, the Bring Your Basket Party is going to be one with a difference. Listen, we want you to identify with the tribe you belong to. So we are going to have a tribal deba. I'm telling you, it's going to be fun, fun, fun. We are also going to have a Mother's Day give back, where we are going to give parcels to all the mothers in Royal House Chapel. Charlie, I can't sit down and talk because I am ready. Mid-year, all night, oh my God. And trust me, every program we do throughout the year is going to be different. It's going to be seasoned with 30 years. Our camp meeting this year, unfortunately, the place is full. If you want to come and you haven't registered, please bring me money. People are coming from all across the nations. We are also having our Thanksgiving service also in June. I mean, the programs are, I can't name them all. We are having pink walk, 2G, you know about our pink walk. And we are having something new in November, where we are having a childhood cancer project. Cancer now is not just about people who are old. Cancer now is affecting six-year-olds, 10-year-olds, 15-year-olds. And this year, last year, we did um, the baby project. This year, our project is the Childhood Cancer Project. And the remember to say thank you is going to be a wow. 2024 is the year for the women. Join me, be a part of Royal Ladies 30th Anniversary. If you're a woman in Royal House Chapel, it doesn't matter where you are, whether you are in UK, whether you are in Europe, whether you are in America, whether you are in Budumbra, whether you are in Wasa, uh, whether you are in the Volta region, whether you are in Ashanti region, every woman will play a part. And for the people in Ahinsie Oil Dome, one of these days I'm going to call all the women and I'm going to tell you what we are doing. What we actually must do is beyond what I'm talking about. Make a date with me from February through December. 30th anniversary. We have entered into three decades, and this is for us, our children, and our children's children. Our theme for this celebration is three decades of empowering women and transforming lives. Within these three decades, within these 30 years, we have empowered women. Today, we have women who have PhDs. Today, we have women who are parliamentarians. Today, we have women who are doctors, are pharmacists, are engineers, and are lawyers. We have empowered women, and we have transformed lives. We are not done yet. Our children and our children's children will also be empowered and will also be transformed. Royal ladies, oh say, hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. Royal ladies, oh say, oh say, Oh say, Dr. Anna has joined me. Oh say, hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. Royal ladies, oh, 30th anniversary. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. Women, you see how I'm excited. I want everybody to be excited. God bless you, be part of our 30th anniversary. You are glorious in our Looking for a, a man uh, or a woman that will live with you for 40 years, look for the following. Number one, look for a man who has vision in life. Even if he's alcoholic, eventually, this spirituality will tell him from alcohol. Check if it's whether he's a giver. 
his spiritual inclination find out his interpersonal relationship with people your belief system also defines your endurance your ability to endure problems and challenges your inner fulfillment also has to do with your inner satisfaction When it comes to physique, stature, all those things, do you have like a speck? Tell me, I want to know. Because you have a very nice, you know. For me, I used to like like very tall. You have to be tall. You have to be muscular. But then I realized that it's really, really not in the tallness and in the muscularity and the body and all of that. For me, you have to have vision. You have to, I have to see that you are going somewhere. I'm tagging along with you. If I see that you are going somewhere, your mind is way. I'm tagging along with you. And I know that with me and you, we will do exploits. Then I'm, I'm, I'm with you. I mean, I'm in. I'm game. Yeah. What's your name? My name is Jaffa Takings. Um, I like your shirts. It's very nice. Thank you so much. Have you had broken hearts before? Oh yeah, broken hearts. The uh, Charlie who no get broken hearts before. <laughs> the way I laugh is like there's some story be behind. You did just me small. What's the worst thing you did when you had broken heart? Some people say they didn't eat for three days. Oh, what mine, did you do? Mine, I had the broken heart around 11 p.m. Hey. I didn't sleep at till 6 a.m. Hey. My grandma prepared tea for me. <laughs> And the tea that I was, the tea was very hot. I was drinking it like water. <laughs> Did your grandma know you had bouquet? Yeah, she knew. Oh, she's so sweet. So she prepared tea for you. I'm like, don't let this one kill you. I said, grandma, I'll die. You must have really loved the girl. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so sorry to hear. Mm, but, oh, but all the same. Oh, it's past. I check cry. Oh, okay. We thank God that's a check. So right now you're dating. Mm. You're not dating. But ha did you date after? Did I? Oh, yeah, yeah, I did. Oh, okay. So, what, what motivated you? Because the way you are describing your pain, I felt like you shouldn't have dated. Oh, me, like, me I, I'll keep on trying till I find the right one. Oh, you have used the right ways. Mm, so, so, 14 February, we are finding love here. I'll come and find love. Hello. What's your name? Della. Can you tell me what you look out for in a man before you accept to be in a relationship with him? Should I say I have a list? So, first of all, he has to be a leader. Okay. A man that can lead me. A man I can submit to. Okay. If I cannot submit to you, I cannot be with you. That's my thing. It's finding love again. Finding love again. I did the introduction where we are saying the truth is it's not easy to find love because you have been through it before and for you everybody is the same but god said to elijah there are seven thousand other prophets in other well words there are seven thousand other women there are seven thousand other men, my darling, the one who must marry you is there. You didn't hear me. Go ahead. Your ex is not correct. Your ex is mad. Your ex is sick. But there are people out there who are correct, who are born again, who are waiting for your type. They are waiting to take you to the next level. You didn't say amen. 
with me this evening are three wonderful people one gentleman and two ladies Reverend Agre Atta Agre sitting right beside me you will hear his story Pastor Jifa hey, your new name now Osebonso levels have changed levels have changed I was looking for you on the other streets little did I know that way too you will move tell somebody me too I will move today she's Mrs. Pastor Mrs. Jifa Osebonso and then also with me is my own armor bearer, Lady Deacon Alice Ampofo Boatin. Go ahead. Go ahead. I want us to start with Deacon Alice. What we are going to do, they are, going, uh, they are all going to share their stories of their past. They are going to share stories of their ex. They are going to share stories of the period in their lives where they cried and where they find themselves today. Mrs. Ice. Alice Ampofobuatin, please tell us your story. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I want to thank Mommy for this opportunity to share my story. I believe it will be a healing process for somebody. And thank you, Mommy, for this program. And thank you for giving me this opportunity. So I fell in love with a gentleman in church. He was a choir master. Not in Royal House. Please, not in Royal House. In my former church. I fell in love with him because he loved the things of God. And Please, I mean, let's listen. Meeting, Otherwise, I'll let them stop the service. Meeting him in church answered my prayer. Because I always wanted somebody who loves the works of God. I mean... Who is, who is a church, church person and who loves Christ. And for him to even be a choir master, oh, I fell for this love. I love him such that when I take my salary, I think I spend 80% on him. Relax, relax, relax. Those who are spending 80%. And 95% on people. <laughs> Instead of spending it on God. And helping me build city of Shiloh. Please go ahead. So I was doing this because when I met him. He wasn't working. Let's say he wasn't well to do. So I felt that someone who leads the church. I mean the choir. He, looks, he has to be presentable. He has to be good looking. So, hey, I found my Christian brother. Let me support him. We went in and out of this. I mean, we're in this relationship for, I think, three years. And then he had the opportunity to travel outside Ghana. Please listen. This travel... It looks like I was sending my own brother outside, outside Ghana. I bought his tickets. I bought everything he had to travel with. I bought him six suits. Please allow. If you keep saying A, I will cut it short. I bought him I, I, I hear what are the colors of the suits. Oh, I think it's um, coffee brown. Yes. Blue, black, black. I mean, you, you understand. Because I was in love. And you see, there's one thing I left out. 
um, growing up, I decided that if I meet any man, I will send him home to my parents. So I introduced him to my father. And when he left, my dad called me and said, Nana, Nana. Then I looked at my father. And I shook my head. And when I left my dad to my room, I said, my father doesn't know what God is bringing to me. Little did I know that my father was telling me God's mind. But I ignored my father. In fact, I even prayed, prayed against my father for telling me that he was the wrong man. So, it happened that he had to travel. He had the opportunity to school outside. Fortunately, when he went for his visa, he had five years multiple visa. So, I was like, oh, Charlie. Nyamia, yeah, when he goes, he's going to come back for me and all that. I had to go for a loan to buy the tickets. And it's not any other airline than KLM. Please listen. At every point in time, I believe God speaks with us, but we don't listen. So when we got to the airline office, I met this gentleman, the one we're buying the ticket from. And he went like, um, so he intentionally did something for the guy to step aside. Then he asked me, is he your brother? I said, no, he's my boyfriend. Ah, then he said, boyfriend, he's not married you. I said, no, he's going to work and come and marry me. Then the man said, he won't come for you. And I told him he will come for me. Yeah, nah, nah. Then he said again, I am telling you he won't come for you. I said, boss, I beg you, you are buying tickets. You sell to us and let's go. So he sold the tickets and then we left. So he's traveling. I packed the, uh, packed Gary, packed Shito, packed um, sugar. I bought a cup, added spoons. Because my lover is traveling out. He's going to work and come for me. He got there. He's, we started talking, talking. Then after two months, he calls and tells me, when you call me, don't speak English. Speak G. And trust me, initially, nothing clicked. It was after five months, when now he tells me, don't call me. I will call you. Then I said, God, first it was, when you call me, don't speak English, speak tree. Now, don't call me. I will call you. Trust me. That was when I realized that, hey, all my investments, the loans, the blue black suits, mommy, the coffee brown, the Casper shirts. And I, was, I wasn't only taking care of him. Oh. When I'm doing my monthly shopping, I'll do small for my family because, you know, my father is there. And then the mother, I will go and buy stuff for them too. Hey. So I was like, ah, am I dreaming? What is happening to me? It wasn't easy for me then. Because, ah, so this guy will call, he will call. Hey, what is happening? Then I said, God. That was when I started feeling that, no, I've lost this relationship. I've lost this thing. I, I have made a big mistake. In how life. did you feel? Mommy. We'll, hmm. come, we'll come to how you feel. We'll come to how you feel. Pastor Jifa. So, Alice is sharing her story of how she was in a relationship boyfriend, girlfriend. Took care of the guy. The guy traveled, never came back to marry her. Now we are going to Mrs. Osaibotu. She was married. Had a big wedding here. In this same auditorium. It was packed full. And what happened? Red and white. You remember? The colors. 
Some people are going for sunshine green, sunshine blue, sunshine orange. Please, Pastor tell Fah. us your story. Pastor Fah, be careful. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank Amen. you for um, this opportunity to share. Well, I met a very quiet, extremely quiet young man um, in the choir. In the choir. Choir hey. <laughs> The choiristers. Shall we listen? Are the choiristers here today? Or they didn't come. They are here. They are here. <laughs> Shall we listen? Well, um, at the time, I was the assistant music director. You were the assistant music director at the time. So, assistant and music so director plus. I was overseeing the Age. activities of uh, choir members. Um, I'm such that when I don't do a lot of talking, but I do a lot of observing. And so I noticed that any time he would come for rehearsals, he'll be sitting all by himself. You know, he won't be chatting, people will be talking, and he's quiet. Then, after a while, he wasn't coming for rehearsals again. And so I decided to check up on him. And so I reached out, and then he said um, he wasn't feeling well. After that, he started, we, we, we became friends, because I was the one who went to look for him. Oh, sir. <laughs> so I noticed that things were difficult for him, because at the time, he didn't have a job. Um, he didn't have a job. A job at all. Hey. Mm. As I'm listening... Ladies listening, yeah. those who come with no jobs, and when we are done and you have an experience, please come and share. And so um, I had started um, organizing events, I was organizing seminars. In fact, I'm the one who brought Sonny Badu's music to Ghana at the time. And so um, Sonny wanted me to handle his music for him at the time. And so I said, you don't have a job. So when I'm going around, let's go. So we are going to copyright to register Sony's music. We are going around to radio stations and dropping CDs off. I would go with him. And then when um, we finish, Pastor Pa, M.O.G. and um, uh, uh, Dickin Alice, we have a spot in circle. Wow. And so... We would go and sit there at walking, and then we would eat Chinese, and then I'll pay. You pay for everybody. I, uh, Please, when we finish, take me to circle. Oh. Ah, mommy, now I can take you. <laughs> you know, I mean, and then I realized he had a need. Things were difficult for him. I had an opportunity to um, visit where he lived, and... He lived in a, something which was as small as a storeroom. The only thing that was in there at the time was a bed. Now, students' mattress. No, um, he didn't even have light in the, in the place. Wow. You know, and so um, I felt like helping. And so he, Let's would, listen. he would come around, we would give him food. I introduced him to my family. And then we decided to date. When we started dating, I started noticing a few things about him. He was very temperamental. Mm -hmm. I mean, the slightest thing, he's upset, you know. Um, you could sit in a car with him, and then he didn't know how to drive very well. And I had a car at the time, and he would want to drive. And then he's running through the potholes. I mean, you, if you have a car and you know how much money goes into right. repairs and somebody is running through the potholes with your car, your heart is about to drop. And then you make a mistake and say, oh, please, slow down. Wherever we are, 
in the middle of a road, wherever, traffic behind us, he will just park right there, get out, pick a car, and then he's gone. Wow. Red flag. Number one. Say red flag. For some reason... Let the dress you are wearing today be a sign. <laughs> red flag. This one was actually a red signboard. For some reason, um, his family were always... They would always call and they're like, are you okay? Are you guys okay? Wow. Is something going on? But nobody said anything at the time. Wow. And so I remember one day he came to our house and my mom offered him food. And this was what he said. To your mother. So when he said that, then my dad said, hey. So, so for our international audience, um, he doesn't eat Still. leftover food. Right. Food put in the fridge to be warmed the following day. He doesn't eat that kind of food. Right. And so my, my dad jokingly said... Please, let's listen. My dad jokingly said, hey, somebody who doesn't have a job and he's not eating left, are you sure about this marriage? I said, oh, we'll pray. God will change him. You know, and I've had an opportunity to share my story um, at different places. And I realized that a lot of the, we women in, in church do those things where we believe so much that our prayer can change a human being. The... You know, and so, I mean, I overlooked everything. Then fast forward. A month to our wedding, I don't know if mommy will remember, our invitation card was given to us. And then I said, oh, let's hand it over to our counselors to pray over it. Then we can share it. He said, no, he wants to start sharing. We had come for rehearsals. So he was holding the card. When we stepped out of the gate, he threw the card right by the gutter, right outside. And so somebody said, are you sure you still want to go through with this marriage? With he just threw marriage. the marriage away. Wow. Then I said to myself, I said, oh, sometimes we can over-spiritualize things. He threw the marriage away. He said, card, no. He has thrown away. He hasn't thrown the marriage away. So where we are right now, there's no way he would throw the marriage away. And so we left it at that again so at our engagement your when, engagement at our engagement when he came he came with slippers bathroom the black one slippers with his kaftan and he was standing outside with his family so when my dad it tells you the guy was already depressed so when my dad Mad stepped man. out then my dad asked him is this what you are coming in with and he said, this is what he has. My dad said, wait. Um, I have a big sister who is in America. My sister had bought shoes for my dad. So my dad carried shoes. Wow. Took it to him outside. Um, the wedding rings uh, we bought. In fact, we married him. That, that, I mean, the yeah. long and short of it all. Our wedding, mommy sold two dresses one for saturday one for sunday it was a thing of joy everybody was excited because i had waited for a long time and so mommy was the one we went to a makeup at mommy's place we spent days after the wedding at mommy's place our cake at the time was an eight-tier cake and i'm talking about 2008 2009 like very expensive. Our wedding, this place was filled to the East Wing. It was as if service was going on. People had come. My wedding was the first wedding that we did. We had a live band over there at the Glory Shed. It was massive. 
my wedding was the first wedding that Apostle General raised funds at that wedding. Wow. My, my wedding was the first. And Daddy didn't want anybody coming for our money. So he carried it home. And he said, we should come for our money at home. And so we went to spend time at Daddy's place. And then Apostle General sat down with us at 11 after power line. Wow. And forgive me, I'm a bit too detailed. So, <laughs> so start with us and said, um, how much money do you have? Do you have a fridge? We said, no. He said, call Reverend Kifoli. Tell him I said he should give you a fridge at a very good price. Call this person. Ask the person to give you this. Mommy, Auntie Angie was giving us frozen chicken, oil, and bags of rice. My ex-husband said he doesn't eat frozen chicken. So, as at that time, when they bring the frozen chicken, we who were lacking, we would give it out because he didn't want to see it in the fridge or he didn't want it in the freezer. So, finally... So, I mean, finally, um, he became abusive. I had four miscarriages and um, the last one I bled for three months continuously and by the grace of God Apostle General and other people helped financially to um, seek for medical help whilst we were at Kolebu the landlord called us by the way let me say this mommy went to rent a house for us and mommy went to sit there from afternoon till evening because there were other people who wanted the house. Mama Rita. And I remember she putting the landlord in her car and bringing the landlord to her house so that the guy would not talk to anybody. And they rented a place for us for three years. God bless you. <laughs> and so... Um, Dickin Alice used to visit, Pastor Pa used to visit, and when they come, sometimes at 11 p.m., he will tell you, I've seen fresh contumbri. If you prepare it and day breaks, I will not eat it. So if you wait, prepare it, what? The, the contumbri at night, he will not eat it. Day has to break. So when you, I, so I became, I had insomnia because I, wouldn't, I, I wasn't sleeping well. Because I start cooking from 11. Because when you cook, before 12, day has broken. <laughs> and he didn't want leftovers in the fridge. It was so bad to the point that sometimes he would, I remember one day he carried palm nut soup, put it under the sink, opened the tap. And so the beneficiaries of the leftover food was MOG and Pastor Pa. <laughs> I hope somebody is listening. Tell somebody you will find love again. Tell the person it doesn't matter what you went through. You will find love again. I give you two minutes to run up. Moving forward. Some of the things he used to say. You, I did you a favor by marrying you. You will not amount to anything. Um, because of your stupidity and giving away monies to people for free, that is why your life is the way it is. And yet he still didn't have a job. He still didn't have a he job. He still didn't have a and job. And you were taking care of him. And sometimes would have to call my mom, tell stories just to feed. And... He, uh, uh, Dick and Alice's own, she bought the thing. This one, so you, you to, people were already we were very good friends. We will go to Reverend Agri, I will come back to you. So, we have heard Dick and Alice, hers was a relationship. We've heard, um, Pastor Jifa, hers was actually marriage that ended up in divorce. Now, we will go to Reverend Agri. Reverend Agri married. Everything was well, but something happened. 
Shall we listen to Reverend Agri? Reverend Th Agri, you are welcome to the show. Th thank, thank you, you Mommy, and uh, happy, happy Valentine, Valentine to all of you. Hey, um, you are eating, so Reverend Agri says, Happy Valentine. And to everyone seated here, I say happy Valentine. And all, all my people who are watching through social media, I want to say happy Valentine. Reverend Agri, I all can't right, so, wait to hear your story. So mine has nothing to do with no link to any choir. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but... A little background story uh, for you to appreciate or uh, understand the kind of emotional reactions and emotional baggage that I was battling with at the time. Young as we were, I, I met this lady when I was... Please lady. let your questions flow. Let your questions flow. Don't wait till the end before you bring in your questions, both in person and online. Mm -hmm. So I met this lady when I was in the elementary school. Okay. Um, I was in Form 3, and, and she was, was in Form 1, one by, by different schools. So I do what we okay. used to go, you know, at Kolegono. Kolegono is a suburb of Accra. Um, the house was close to the school, so we saw ourselves, you know, most of the time. Then the graduate, we all got to secondary school. I happened to be in Accra High. And she came to uh, Christian Methodist. Okay. So, so when, when I was, I was in Form 3, she entered Form, form one. 1. And uh, where we used to live, we were always going to school together. Okay. After school, we walk back home, you know, join public transport, uh, almost all the time, with a few friends. This is a young love. Like love. Yeah. At this point, we had known ourselves and grown up together, everything, looking at the number of years through to secondary, A level, and all that. After A level, then I started training. She also finished O level and then entered the buying and selling business. So we were all selling together, moving together, everything. After, After some, some years, years, then we decided to formalize the relationship. So we got married, uh, you know, because the families were all happy seeing us around. She was coming to my house, uh, my elders were so happy with her and everything. A lot of people within the area even thought we were siblings. Wow. That's the extent to which, you know. So eventually we got married and God being so good. She had the first pregnancy. Um, when we had a baby, few days after that, we lost the baby. Wow. And uh, this really... I want you to listen carefully. This really, really, uh, you know, affected... The microphone. This affected all of us, the two of us. But some way, somehow, we managed to overcome. And then the second pregnancy resulted. This second pregnancy, we decided to change where we were living, so we rented a new place. A single room with our kitchen, you know, uh, normal, <laughs> polygonal single room. So whilst there, uh, we were very happy, I mean, everything, young couple, uh, with few friends coming around and all that. And I was doing small, small business here and there, so everything we had, we shared together. Wow. Going to the market to buy anything, we went, went together. together. Wow. So, so this, this second, second pregnancy, pregnancy, midway through, around five months, when, when we had gotten, gotten this new place, we said, no, let's, you know, uh, get the room, everything changed. We, we went, went to the, the market, market, we bought a few things, things even, uh, anyway, anyway, all, all the, the things, things we had in the room were second items. Certainly. We couldn't afford, 
new items. Where the pain actually was coming from, Mama, is this. After getting everything in the room and all that, one day we went to Cantamanto, secondhand clothes, you know. We bought curtains and everything. She came, we decided, she decided to hang on the curtains and beautify the place. And so, nine months got, you know, uh, along the line and she had to go to the hospital for delivery. That was what, you know, the whole thing happened. Delivery, I was in town and I was called that uh, she wanted to me to rush the hospital. So I rushed to the hospital only to be told that that particular day she was due for surgery, cesarean uh, uh, operation. The nurses and doctors had gone on strike that very morning. So um, we had, I had to take her home. Kolebu to my house wasn't far, so. Took her home. Home, because she, she was, was supposed, supposed to. to. The, the doctors, doctors didn't want to, you know, keep pregnant people around. So we got women. An anchor of mine was wondering because she was due for the surgery that day and the strike. So we said, oh, okay, then we will go back and find out from the doctor, this particular doctor who was taking care of her and all that. And uh, we were directed to his private clinic. Okay. So this private clinic, Somewhere, Somewhere dummy. The the Saturday, one Saturday, Saturday, one morning, Saturday morning, we decided to go there. My uncle gave me his car uh, to drive, and then I took her there. Fortunately for us, we met a doctor. And uh, she, he explained that the reason why he didn't tell us after the strike to come to his clinic, the reason was that the clinic, private clinic, and the post, I said, no. That doesn't, doesn't matter. matter. One day, because we, we lost the first baby, and this time we don't want to. He said, okay, if you think you can afford, then um, you can, you know, um, come and pay. Come and pay. And I said, no, no, no problem. So then, then my wife said, okay, then since we are here already, let me remain, go home and bring me my like, uh, bath. The bag she returned from Kolebu was, okay. was intact. You know, I think the only sponge and so she would say, told me what to pick and I did that. Between uh, Domi and Kolegono, pick the items, I went back and the doctor said she was dead. And um, the whole thing was this. The doctor wanted to handle the pregnancy, the baby, the mother all alone. So according to the nurse who was on duty, the doctor was actually in a hurry when he was traveling that morning. So wanted to just get uh, things done and then just did that. So I got there, the luggage, everything, and the doctor was inside there. And they couldn't even break the news. It was the nurse who was. And um, this really devastated me, Mama. That's exactly what I was going to ask. It really, How did really, you feel? It really, really devastated me. Because everything was fine. fine. You were happy. And then, you didn't have money. You the had morning, second The morning before we left for Domi, she had prepared a uh, fried uh, egg, tea. We were just about taking our breakfast. And my uncle signaled us that he wanted his car quickly. So, so we covered the food. Going wow. to dummy and come back, and, and she even ran to the walk to the gate to open the gate for me to drive out. So, so she was strong, even though nine months she was strong. So, so between that two, two, you know, points, points and, and the doctor, doctor said, "My darling, so you see what I said. When you hear somebody else's story, you know that yours is small. Yes, you are going through a breakup." You are going through a divorce. But here is somebody who married. He was poor. But at least he was happy. He was using second hand things. But he was happy. They had a first baby. Saw the baby. The baby died. The Lord helped them. His wife got pregnant again. Was going to deliver. He loses the baby, loses his wife too. 
Tell somebody, yours is small. So relax. So, Mama, we were all young. Uh, this, I was just around 27. She was 24, 25, you know. Wow. And we had, you know, been together for years. For years, since secondary for school years. days. From elementary school. Hey, from elementary, elementary school. school. Yes. So it, it was, was really, really a tall. So, elementary you know. school is um, uh, primary school. So they started from primary school, no, friends no. in the same neighborhood, walked to school, chatted. I mean, they had become friends until they entered into high school. Oh my God. Okay, so it devastated me, seriously. And um, I don't know, at, the, at, the, at one point after that, um, I lost you know, the love, the desire, everything for marriage. And unfortunately for me, I didn't get the opportunity that uh, most of you are yeah. enjoying now. I was coming from a church where these things were absent. Opportunities like this, you know, were not available. So I didn't have You didn't around. have the support system. Support system, no good example in the family. Even there was nobody to run to. Being the only son of my mother and all that. So it was really, really <laughs> wow. Tough, you know. And then few friends I thought could help eventually uh, disturb me. I found myself, when I was with the lady, mommy, I never stayed out beyond 8 p.m. Wow. By six. You know, those were the days with no mobile phones. So That's right. if you wanted to see, talk to anybody, you had to be there physically. This is about 30 something years ago. So, so within this period, the few friends who were in court trying to help rather shifted my attention, you know, in a different direction. I found myself now drinking. Oh. Now drinking, I could sit down with them for hours. We'll be drinking guineas. Something I had never tasted before. Wow. I never tasted alcohol before, you know, that time. Could drink bottles of guineas. Wow. Get myself drunk. Tell somebody it is well. Reverend so, Jif Pastor Jifa, relax a bit. I, I'm getting emotional. I'm getting very emotional. Pastor Jifa, did you have any support system? First, how did you feel during that time? the divorce um, you still had to come back to church the same place you had the wedding and the same people who saw your big wedding uh, how did you feel and what support did you get hallelujah yeah. um, let me first of all Thank God for the life of our spiritual parents. Let's hear her, please. And so I remember when I was at the hospital with the bleeding issues, then Apostle General called. And this was what he said. We had lost Pastor Pat Zano around the same time. And then Daddy said, I do not want to lose two worship leaders at the same time. You don't have to be married. I have called your parents. They will get you out of a place. The first thing that came to mind, you were a pastor. Your marriage has failed. Mm. And so you have failed as a pastor. Mm. What will people say? What will people say? And it's always what's...
comes out of us. Some people stay in it and die. Why? Because what will people say? And then, um, the unfortunate thing for me was this. When I was at the hospital, he took everything that belonged to me from the TV to the bed to the cutlery set to and he left my clothes he left your clothes so I called mommy and this was what mommy said the God who gave you those things that he has taken away that same God can give you more so do not worry go ahead go ahead go ahead go ahead and for the first time, I experienced this very severe pain in my heart where when I touched my skin, I literally could feel the pain. It was, it was painful. It was, you couldn't sleep. I had become so dark. Dickin Alice was fairer than me at, at a point. And so I had to literally start seeking, asking people, do you know any cream I can use? Do you know? Because I, I go to bed and I think I've slept for five hours and I realize I've slept for 15 minutes. And I'm, I wake up. It got, it got so bad that at a point, my family would eat with me because I couldn't eat. I couldn't sleep. And so when they dish the food and we all sit around the table, I break down and I start crying. And they don't know what to say. You don't know whether to say sorry, it is well. Everything will be okay. I mean, you, it, it was some way. It was later on, a few years ago, that I found out that I was actually coming to church. And so this Sunday, I wear this dress to church. And the next Sunday, I do not wash it. I do not iron it. And I wear the same dress back to church. And didn't have a clue that I was repeating my clothes. Wow. You know, um, it was everything. I wanted to die. I had put on so much weight. At a point, I was weighing 146 kilos. Um, for those online, when it's 9 o'clock, we will go off. But I promise you, everything that we will discuss, you will hear your portion next week, Wednesday. We are going to come to you again, same time, same day, next week, Wednesday. So don't worry if we go off. We will go off at 9. Please send your questions. We will make sure that if we don't even answer them today, we will answer them next week. If we are able to answer them, we will play it to you next week. You are, you, you've had the emotional type side you've heard the crying side uh, reverend agree almost made me break down but you are about to hear the sweet portion say you are about to hear the sweet portion tell somebody there's about to be sweetness in your life so we will go off at nine o'clock but i promise you whatever we discuss we will play it as part two next week, Wednesday. So for my online viewers, thank you so much for being with us. I haven't seen you since December. Happy New Year. Year 2024 is full of blessings. Year 2024 is full of miracles. Year 2024 is going to be filled with testimonies. My darling, if you are crying... My darling, if you are hurting, my darling, if you are in pain, my darling, if you have an ex, don't worry. Just like today, they can come and sit here and share their story with the world. Tomorrow, it will be your turn. You won't come to Family Life. You won't come to Powerline TV. I will be on the show with you on CNN. I'll be on, somebody is not saying amen. I'll be sh on the show with you on BBC, my darling. It will come soon and very soon. 
I will see you same time, same day next week. I love you and remain blessed.